So my name is Nina Porti Reinhardt. I'm an investor in startups in Switzerland and Europe and part managing director and founder of Reinhardt Capital. At Reinhardt Capital, we uh, invest in early stage companies up to Series A. Uh, we do ICT, a lot of B2B companies uh, in Switzerland and Europe. And we are also eager to work with uh, very diverse and mixed leadership teams in the startups. So today I'd like to talk to you about a financial instrument called Convertible Loan Agreement. Let's define what it is. Let's look at when it makes sense to utilize it. Let's discuss the disadvantages and the advantages it offers. And last but not least, what are some of the controversial aspects of it? Well, there are circumstances in which uh, startups and investors decide to enter into a convertible loan agreement because it has some advantages. And I think it's important to highlight that uh, there are also some risks. And it's, today we're going to talk about convertible loan agreements. A convertible loan agreement is a financial instrument that combines a debt instrument with an equity instrument. And typically, the investors entering into this contract are looking to become shareholders. So there's a mechanism by which the debt will convert into equity under certain conditions. These conditions are typically a fundraising round, for example. There are a couple of things that need to be negotiated during a convertible loan agreement. Typically, you have to discuss uh, what is the loan amount, and whether there is an interest to be repaid or not, uh, whether there is a cap and valuation of the company, um, and perhaps some other typical investor rights, such as information rights or uh, liquidity preferences or subordination, for example. So many times the investors and entrepreneurs uh, enter into a convertible loan agreement because in a way, compared to a fundraising round, it is usually cheaper, easier and shorter to negotiate. And for the entrepreneur, the advantage is that he or she can get cash into the bank a lot faster than if they would, there would be a fundraising round. For the entrepreneurs, there are a couple of advantages. So the entrepreneurs typically can get cash relatively quickly. They sometimes also can get a loan, which would be typically difficult to find at an established bank because the startups typically don't have collateral when, they, when they're requested. Another advantage is that, as I mentioned, that to negotiate it can go pretty fast to negotiate a convertible loan agreement. And last but not least, the investor community, as well as uh, tax advisors and lawyers are familiar with this type of instrument. For the investor, there's also a couple of advantages in doing so. The first advantage is that the investor typically gets a discount onto this uh, uh, loan. And that means that he or she can enter into the capital of the company with uh, an ad advantage in terms of price. So for the investor, the risk is that uh, the investor may not even become a shareholder if certain the conditions are not met to convert the debt into equity. Um, so that may defeat the purpose of the investor you know, with the intention of becoming a shareholder. That's one of the risks. Secondly, if the startup has too many convertibles, perhaps even other debts, then that means that the startup may be at risk uh, of being over indebted and we all know that this situation, if not managed properly, could lead to bankruptcy. So that would be a risk for the entrepreneurs and for the investors as well. It takes about two to six months to raise a fundraising round for entrepreneurs, typically in early stage. And many companies may not have the funds to really you know, sleep well at night during this period. So that could be a situation in which uh, entrepreneurs may want to seek a convertible loan agreement. For the entrepreneurs, uh, it can happen also that they realize that in order to raise properly in, a, in ideal conditions, they would like to reach some milestones. And perhaps there's only a matter of weeks or months until they can reach some milestones in order to really nicely value their company. So these milestones could be uh, obtaining a patent, for example, or hiring a key person in the team, uh, or finishing the minimal viable product, for example. And if they would complete these in a matter of months, they would be able to really fundraise in ideal conditions. 
So in order to allow them to have more funds to complete these milestones, they may engage in the convertible loan agreement. It makes sense to uh, raise a convertible loan agreement when you only have a small amount that is needed of cash. It also makes sense when you have few investors who already know you and therefore can relatively quickly provide you with a small amount of funds. If you raise a convertible with a few investors already known to you, it is actually very encouraging for future investors uh, to see that there is confidence in your company and that may encourage them to uh, participate into a fundraising round. I think entrepreneurs and investors need to be aware of the fact that convertible loan agreements can be controversial. Uh, let me explain what I mean. Well, in, in the SIGTI um, code of conduct, it is clearly stipulated that when investors engage in a, a fundraising round, that there should not be a negotiation of special conditions for any of them. That's very clear. Nevertheless, it can happen that an, uh, an investor engages into a convertible loan agreement with an entrepreneur for a number of reasons. For example, when the entrepreneur and the investor has spent months and months uh, working together to make the company investable. That means that an investor may have spent hours and hours over weeks or months really supporting the company pro bono to properly set a data room, for example, to properly pre-negotiate the valuation, to properly have all the conditions that make the company attractive and investable. In this situation, for example, you may consider it legitimate that an investor has done considerable more work than the remaining investors, and he or she may be entitled to have a convertible loan agreement at a, at a preferential price. Now, another reason that makes the convertible loan agreement controversial is because if entrepreneurs have too many convertible loan agreements in the negotiated, some investors may not like this. Why? because they may fear that the entrepreneurs never reach agreement on valuation with investors. That could be one reason. Or the other thing they may fear is that the entrepreneurs don't really seriously want to fundraise with an equity round. And in this situation, sometimes you may um, discourage some investors from entering your capital. Uh, I'd like to mention that before I enter into convertible loan agreement, I do a full due diligence. And I also ensure myself that if the company has already fundraised and has shareholders, that the shareholders agree with this convertible loan agreement and also the convertible loan agreement obtains board approval. So some of the terms that I typically negotiate are the interest rate of the debt, the maturity of the debt at which there is automatic conversion into equity. I also negotiate a cap for the valuation and also some other additional terms that a shareholder typical, typically gets, such as information rights um, or liquidity preferences. I think one of the most important uh, terms you need to see is the most favored nation in the convertible loan agreement. That means that if future investors enter into convertible loan agreement after me, I will be entitled to have their terms if they're of course, better than the ones I have negotiated today. Absolutely, you can use a convertible loan to build momentum. You can imagine if you have a first-time investor and you have a convertible loan agreement, this will not only allow you to achieve your milestones, but also build trust and confidence for future investors. And this positive circle is what you want to see established in a company and also among investors. Um, so in a way, raising money is like throwing a good party. You need to have the right people, the right time, in the right mood, so that you can achieve your goals. I think for a new investor who is starting the journey uh, in startups, it's important to consider a convertible loan agreement as a type of equity. Because first of all, there's many other better debt instruments than a convertible loan to uh, enjoy uh, interest rate, for example. And secondly, because in a way, the, the spirit in which we do convertible loans is to become a shareholder. Uh, as a conclusion, I'd like to mention that for us at Reinhard Capital, we think that the best moment to invest in a convertible loan agreement is when both entrepreneurs and investors are convinced that it's only a matter of weeks or months 
until the company reached important milestones. And I think also that if you enter into convertible agreements, that is important that you communicate with other investors or possible investors so that they know why you have entered into convertible loan agreement. And having said that, I'd like to wish you all a fantastic journey in your investments. And I'm very excited to potentially work with you and make this ecosystem really rock and show the world what we're capable of. 